Hey everyone, so in this video, we're gonna talk about sample-based versus tick-based operation. Okay, so audio tracks will default to sample-based operation and MIDI tracks and instrument tracks will default to tick-based. And you can see what they're gonna default to if you have the new track dialog open. So if you have an audio track, you'll see that it automatically uh, is in samples, which means it's sample-based. And then if you go to say a aux input, also samples, master fader, samples, all these things, but MIDI track switches automatically to ticks and so does an instrument track. A first thing we might pay attention to is the fact that we can change the type of operation that a track is in. So we can switch tracks at any point from tick based to sample based if we want to. Sample based tracks, things like this guitar track, will reference an absolute position on the timeline, so a specific sample in time. Whereas tick-based tracks reference a relative position, like this MIDI drum track, depending on the tempo of the session. So because this is linked to a bar and a beat, if the beats are farther apart or the bars are longer or shorter, the bars and beats will also shrink or lengthen in order to fit the tempo. So it's a relative time scale. So you'll notice that because audio is based on an absolute position in time, if I change the tempo where the bars and beats land, uh, the audio will stay linked to a point in time, not to a specific bar or beat. So if I change the session tempo here by clicking and dragging up or down, if I speed it up, you'll notice the MIDI is changing. It's kind of flexing to where the beats, the bars and beats, those relative positions are but the audio stays fixed to a specific moment in time. When it comes to MIDI, it's the opposite because it's linked to a relative position. If I change the tempo, uh, those bars and beat markers inside that MIDI information will stick with where the tempo is. And so I can play back and change the tempo. up and it flexes to where wherever it wants to be so you can see how that relative position in time stretches like a rubber band so audio is a little bit like a brick and MIDI is a little bit like a rubber band it's flexible now if we switch an audio track to tick based so we can do that here so you'll see a little clock versus a little metronome here in this corner. So if I click this over to ticks, what it will do was it will not adjust the actual audio speed like it does with MIDI, but it will fix the start of the audio to a specific bar and beat. This is bar seven beat one. If I change the tempo here, the audio now moves, but each individual clip will not change speed. So it's just fixing the start of each of these clips to a bar and a beat. So because I slowed it down, they're getting farther apart. Their own tempo is not changing, but their start point of the clip is sticking to a specific bar and beat. So going back to 190, everything will line up again. So if you want to, say, adjust the tempo and make sure that the audio starts at a, that same bar, then you can do that but the actual audio will not change speed until we get to elastic audio, which we'll cover soon. So elastic audio will attempt to adjust the speed of regular audio, just like MIDI does. MIDI, you can also switch to samples. This will then fix this MIDI clip, for instance, uh, to a specific moment in time. And if I change the tempo now, you'll notice the MIDI doesn't move. My selection's leaving. <laughs> but the actual MIDI clip that was selected right here is not going anywhere. It is now locked. So my MIDI is no longer adjusting tempo. It will stay at that exact tempo even though my session tempo has changed. So we can turn MIDI into a brick. Okay, so let's look at, let's just compare this one more time just to summarize. So if we have audio here that is sample based and MIDI here that is tick based, we can compare really easily just looking at what happens to these if we change the tempo. So right now, tempo is 120. If I have an audio clip here, it is 
two measures long, right, from 101 to 103, and its time is four seconds. So I'm going to change the tempo to 60. What do we expect to happen? Well, we expect the audio to be like a brick. Its length does not change at all. So it is now still the exact amount of time that is absolute, right? It's four seconds long. But how many bars is it now at 60? Well, just one, right? This is now one bar because the tempo has changed. What's changed is the session, but the audio itself has not changed at all. So I'm going to undo that. Now let's look at what happens if I do the same thing to MIDI. So this MIDI is the same thing. Two bars long and, and four seconds long. So what happens if I again change this tempo? Control click that tempo marker and put it at 60 again. Notice that the MIDI is stretched now. It remains two measures long, but it's now slower because it's been stretched. So its time is now double, eight seconds. So if we have the tempo with audio, the audio stays the exact same length, but it ends up being different in relation to the session, right? The number of bars it takes up, whereas MIDI will stretch so that it's always exactly two bars, but its amount of time has now doubled because it's been stretched. So hopefully that makes pretty good sense for sample-based versus tick-based. And again, the easiest way to think about it is tick-based is elastic. It will stretch to stay with the right bar and beat. And audio is like a brick. It does not want to change. Okay, that's about it for that one. See you in the next one.